Good morning. Welcome to the Audacious Freedom Podcast, episode number 15. I'm calling it all the social media hype to be on vacation or away from home. I am your host, Dee Dee Mendez. I'm a storyteller, a perpetual student of self-development, and an audacious life liver, among many other areas of expertise and interests. I am most recently the founder of audaciousfreedom.com. I come to you, my listeners, with stories about what I learn, read, observe, and experience in the world today. I am inspired by so many other storytellers, and I'm told I inspire others as well with my own stories. We're halfway through summer 2021, and I chose this topic for today's Audacious Freedom, the podcast episode, because it's that time of year when social media is on fire with vacation posts. Even last year, the first summer of the pandemic, people were posting beach and poolside side pictures. People I know well were posting. People I don't know very well were posting, as were the famous people I follow on social media. Normally, my daughter and I would do a beach trip or two each summer with different friends, and last summer was a little different because we did one short beach trip, just a couple of nights at the very kind invitation of my sweet friend. We had to wear masks in the common areas of the condo resort in Delaware and at restaurants and until we sat down at our tables. It was the first summer when my daughter put her foot down and said, There was no way she wanted to go on the beach. She hated the sand. She agreed to the pool and I watched her swim with my friend's youngest kids and my friend and I chatted a bit. I felt out of sorts because here we were at one of my favorite places at any time of year at a beach. And it was awkward for me as a mom and for me as a friend to have accepted this sweet and very generous invitation and to have been given a bedroom to ourselves, having displaced two of my friend's children to much less desirable sleeping arrangements, which I think ended up being the living room sofa bed. And my daughter didn't want to be on the beach. And while she was in the pool, even the pool seemed to be losing its appeal to her. Maybe it's because my daughter was 10 at the time, almost 11, and her body was changing. Maybe it's because she's very sensitive to the heat. She always has been, and she'd rather be inside in the comfort of air conditioning. Officially, the pediatrician describes her sensitivity to the heat as heat exhaustion, and it can happen after only a couple hours of exposure to the heat. She can at best feel nauseous for the next 12 hours, or she can at worst throw up. Maybe just feeling nauseous without the relief of throwing up is actually worse for her than throwing up itself. At least after throwing up, which is almost always in the middle of the night, my daughter feels better and she rests the next day to fully recover. It sounds very dramatic and over the top, I know, especially for someone like me who loves the beach I don't love extreme heat and humidity when there's no relief from it in the ocean or a pool, but the beach is the best place for me during the summer. Maybe last summer, really having to face that my kid is not a beach person bummed me out. Bummed me out that my friends who generously invited us along on her family's vacation and my kid wasn't fully appreciating or thriving in the environment that brings my friend, her kids and me so much joy. I love early morning walks on the beach by myself. I always have. Walking along the ocean at dawn makes me feel so small in the universe and yet connected to the earth at the same time. I do some of my best thinking and almost kind of meditations on those walks. Whatever I might wish could be better in my life seems to go away because I'm but a drop in the universe's existence. I'm just one little person here in the world for such a relatively short period of time. I'm bummed that my kid is not a beach person and that she's not a morning person to share any of those morning walks with me, even though I do love that time alone. I'm bummed that the days are over of posting photos of my kid playing in the sand or in the ocean with her friends and that because of the pandemic, we weren't able to go to New York City to visit our friends and my daughter's father as we typically would. 
New York City was a ghost town last summer. Nothing was open and it didn't feel safe. We did go for one other getaway last summer. I offered to take my daughter and her best friend to Philadelphia for a couple of nights. The girls were excited and mapped out a few sites they would like to see. And I was happy to be able to walk around the city and to try new restaurants. Did I really want to do that for my daughter, her friend and me? Or was that just to quote unquote, keep up with people on social media? Honestly, we could have done the same damn thing without even getting in the car, save being able to walk to the Liberty Bell, which was a hot long walk for the girls. And I was surprised to see the bell is now inside a building and it looked especially small as if we could only briefly admire it from outside through a window. We could have instead stayed in our little suburban community, less than 20 miles outside of Washington, D.C., where we are just steps away from wonderful restaurants, seafood, Spanish restaurant, Italian restaurant, a couple of pubs, beer joints, um, American food, bistros, Tex-Mex place, a winery, you name it. And they're shopping right here, just a few blocks where we, from where we live including a Sephora, an Anthropology, J. Crew, Lululemon, and there's even an Apple store. I'm perfectly happy with a staycation, which I indulge in every week and weekend anyway, right here in our backyard all year round. I guess I think I was trying to give my daughter and myself something to say when people would ask, where did you go this summer? What did you do? The simple truth was we had a couple nights at the beach with friends, the best parts of which for me were the walks on the beach and in the evenings when I could treat everyone to a lovely dinner out and when we would take the kids after dinner for ice cream and souvenir shopping on the boardwalk. Then we had a couple of nights in Philadelphia and the best parts for me there were when the girls were happy back in the hotel room would take out lunch or dinner and dessert and I was sitting outside by myself at a local restaurant, sipping on wine and eating a fresh meal. The girls had their independence and I had mine. And then when we were back, then we were back home, my favorite place. I can't wait to be back home to launder everything and put our stuff back in place, including our car in the garage and leaving it there for the next several days. Anything I really wanna do can be done on foot, especially getting a couple of drinks and meal out or shopping. My daughter is happy at home too, and she doesn't feel pressure to go out of town, even though she knows that's what many of her friends do. They go to the beach, they go to visit family out of state, they go to Disney. We've done that too. And while the social media posts show the best of those vacations and time with our friends and family, they don't show the waiting in the airports, the long lines, the delays, the hunger, the sleepiness, the motion sickness, yes, my daughter not only suffers from heat exhaustion, but also from motion sickness. I have been thrown up on in taxis, many taxis in New York City and on the way to airports. I have led my daughter to the bathroom on trains to throw up. I've taught her how to throw up in a plastic bag or into a bucket, as we would later learn was much easier to deal with than a plastic bag a plastic bag we'd have to tie off and pray it didn't have a hole in it and that we could soon throw it away. A bucket was like an old large yogurt container with a lid that was sure not to leak and whose contents could be dumped into a toilet and the bucket could be washed out and reused. Every time I travel with my daughter I worry about her motion sickness. We've tried everything over the years to prevent it. Dramamine, some kind of acupressure bracelet thingies, sitting in the middle in the back seat of a car to look out the front windshield and nothing has seemed to rid her of nausea. Hard candy or lollipops can help. Maybe it's just the treat of having sugar and unlimited candy that helps. And yet she has thrown up so many times traveling to so many places that I can still feel the shaking of my hands and my concentration to help her catch the vomit and to dispose of it lovely conversation, isn't this? Sorry. This has been the reality of travel for us, the behind the scenes parts no one wants to talk about. For me, it's not that different than all the business trips I ever did. What good is it to say I was traveling for work to 
you name it, San Francisco or LA or Chicago or Boston or Montreal or Tampa or Dallas or Phoenix or wherever else than when mostly what I was seeing was airports, hotel rooms and conference rooms. Yeah, sometimes I'd also get to see friends and family in the area and there could be nice bonding time with colleagues, but mostly I couldn't wait to get back home and settled. I still feel that way and so does my daughter. I offered her multiple times this summer the option to go away for a few days, anywhere. I didn't offer the beach because that doesn't suit her now, I know, and I'm fine not going. I suggested some places that would be cooler weather-wise and that wouldn't involve standing in long hot lines like we stood in at Disneyland and Disney World a few years back. What about Canada or Alaska even, I offered even though Alaska especially wasn't a place I'd been particular, particularly interested in going to. I would do it for my kid if she thought she would enjoy it, though. I would not have minded going to Toronto or Montreal, places I'd been to for work previously, in which I would like to explore more than conference rooms and dinners with colleagues. No thanks, my kid said to any of the offers. All right, I thought. At least I asked, and she couldn't put it on me that we didn't go anywhere. I hope this means that my daughter is comfortable in her life and that we might be different than her friends, that we don't take annual vacations to see family. That's the two of us plus Bogey, not a family of four, two kids, a mom and a dad, who take, a, take and post pictures of themselves on social media. My daughter seems to want to be different than everyone else in the outfits she chooses for herself, things that others would not put together, like striped knee socks, striped shorts, and a striped t-shirt, all purposely mismatchy. She's already 11 now, about to turn 12, and she's not remotely interested in being girly or into makeup, like some girls her age are, and like I probably was. And I'm glad for us both that she doesn't feel like she needs to, that we need to go anywhere this summer. We both know the strain of travel with her motion sickness and with travel fatigue in general. There really is a very stressful part of being away from home. Even when we get to our destination, then there's coordinating with our family or friends about what to do, when to do it, where and what time to eat and all the unglamorous parts about coexisting with other people if only for a short time. There's also that pre-travel crunch when you try to get all your work done to be able to go away for a week, when you squeeze in all your errands and packing for the vacation the next week, when you can't accept any social invitation because you're so busy. And then there's the post-travel crunch when you are being punished for having been away for a week and when it takes you another full week to unpack and to get settled. And don't forget about to get to the grocery store because there's no food in your house. Wait, that pre and post travel really doesn't apply to us anymore. It's been years, at least six, since we have been away for more than three or four nights because I don't like that stress that makes the trip almost not worth it. I have learned to prevent any kind of drama in my life and it really does feel like unnecessary drama to be too busy before a trip, too busy after a trip, and then planning for the next trip. I'd like to get to where my daughter and I could get away for entire summers while I work remotely on my passion projects, reading the works of inspiring storytellers and recording podcast episodes and connecting with my listeners and people whom I inspire. And my daughter gets to rest and sleep in and we live for the summer in a new place or two that we could really get to explore on our own. Maybe certain friends or family could come to visit for a few days here or there. And it's most likely in another country, Canada, France, Italy, Switzerland, I don't know, somewhere that we can, at least I can, because my daughter is not yet adventurous with food, explore the local cuisine and adult beverages where we can see how the other people live. It's the kind of time away that most people don't take, at least not Americans. And it's calm and peaceful, not frenetic and it's being somewhere and getting to know it. It's not about moving around and how many miles you log. It's how much time on the ground in one place that you log for at least a few weeks in one place. 
it's going to bed and waking up in the same place for an extended period. It's not for social media posts. It's for a new perspective on the world and for inspiration and reflection. It's for settling in for a similar routine as the one at home, making morning coffee and quiet for me in the morning, meditating, reading, writing, recording podcast episodes, a couple of strength training workouts at home and lots and lots of stretching. Then finally, as my reward, a lovely spot for wine and lunch, then a nap back at home and time with my daughter, then reading before bed. The same routine as at home, but with a new background and places nearby to discover and explore. The pace is calm and slow, peaceful and energizing. And it's spontaneous and purposeful at the same time. Spontaneous in that I can, we can decide to go anywhere at any time at the spur of the moment based on the weather or how I'm feeling about my passion projects. And it's pers purposeful and that I'm there, we're there to slow down and to be open in a new setting in a different way of living. When people ask what we did over a summer like this, we can say, we relaxed over the summer. What did you do? This has been Dee Dee Mendez with Audacious Freedom, the podcast. Thank you for listening, and I can't wait for next time. <laughs>